Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is going to be the control agent tutorial. I'm going to cover everything I know about the level that I can think of right now. Um, I'm going to be mostly focusing on the first room and how to execute as well as I know. Um, basically how to get the fastest pace as possible for, you know, basically 358 and better. Um, even if you're not so great at the level, I think this will help just to understand like kind of like the thinking that I I have when approaching a level like control agent. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I'm just going to show you some gameplay I have done. Uh, I captured for this tutorial showing uh, how to do the first room and I'll explain every little detail I can. And then I'll just show you some good training examples. Um, basically what you can learn from and like how to deal with certain guard variations. So I'll just go ahead and show you what we're going to do first. So one thing I do like to do in this level is to attempt to warp the lift. Um, I'll show you what that looks like first. So when you swap weapons at the very start, you actually can warp the lift. So let's back up here and let's see how we do that. Um, let's see, how do we frame advance control F, I think. Oh. Alright, let's. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you immediately hit A and B as soon as you can hit the lift. So, right there, like, like right as I have control of bond, I wait basically a frame. So, I'm close enough to open the lift and then I open it and hit A and B at the same time. Okay, once I op start opening the lift, I try to get to the middle of the door, and then when I'm about to touch the middle of the door, I hit A again. As you can see that I'm lined up sort of with the um, half of the door on my screen, the other half is pretty hard to see. You're not going to see much when you're playing on full screen. Uh, if you're playing on wide, you probably will see the other side of the crack, but that's probably all you'll see. And you'll And then I warp, basically, so at most I see the crack, I think. This is like the kind of thing that I look for um, visually is I want the weapon to come out when I'm when this is visible, but I can't see anything else pretty much. And then if you do hit the warp at the start, you're gonna have to react to it, which is probably the hardest part about doing the strat. And I always do two shots at the first guard because it's really unlikely to get them in one shot. And then as soon as I do the second shot, I'm already turning here to try to get these two guards that are lined up. But in this example, I missed these guards, but that's okay. I'll show you a better example uh, of doing the start here. But that's essentially my route through the room. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up another, an exam uh, another example. I'm sorry, let me go ahead and pull up this one. Okay. So I missed the warp. Okay, so the main thing that I like to do is I like to do first like one shot only for this first guard. If I take more than one shot, it really screws up the whole room because if you injure this guy and you don't kill him, what's going to happen is the guard off screen by the corner here, he's going to react to the first guard to getting injured and then he's going to run out like forwards or he might roll he'll do a lot of troll stuff so basically you want to kill this guard as soon as possible and then turn and try to kill the second guard before he gets to do anything troll like move out of your way so the way I like to do this kill is I wait until my dot is pretty much lined up with the pillar here at the very edge and then I react uh, to that and then when I hit shoot basically I hope that bond is moved enough basically like a frame or two and It'll allow me to hit the guard in the chest for one shot. So let's go ahead and do that. So right here, I'm already shooting pretty much. Like, And then as soon as I am done with the shot, I actually come towards the pillar a little bit more and I rotate to the right. So I'm going this way, let like forwards, and I'm turning right. So I'm holding up left and holding right on the joystick. And you can see that What's happened here is I have this guard lined up with the guard that's behind him. And this is very critical because two things could happen. First, you miss your shot, 
and it could hit the guard behind them, or you kill this guard really fast, and then you kind of swing out to the left just a little bit to kill the guard that is behind the second guard, and you can probably get the d5k and kill the second or the third guard pretty fast. So I tried to do one shot here, but you know it depends. You have to kind of learn how to react to what's happening. So here I think I do one shot. So I know he's dead because I had a clear shot at his chest. And so I just had a good feeling that that's the best thing I could have done. And I'm already lining up for this kill here. And I'm not sure if I'm going to get him in one shot, so I might do two here. So I did two shots there because I wasn't sure there was going to be a clean kill. But ideally you do uh, three shots, three kills for the first three guards. And then I kind of I kind of go left of the guard, of the second guard to pick up his gun. But then I kind of like strafe and strafe right into him. So what's going to happen next is once you shoot the third guard, um, the guards, the two, the pair of guards on your right are going to react to bond. And this is where my strats differ from some other people's strats. Um, some people, like, or for example, Clemens likes to uh, turn and then pull out the D5K and then he'll wait and then he'll use his auto aim to get both of these guys. And I think that's fine. That will you can get fast starts, but I think the method that I do is better because it sets up for the last kill faster, and you can get better first room consistency. You can get 356 starts like way more consistently than I than waiting around and using your auto aim. And I feel like using auto aim only is pretty inconsistent. So uh, the idea is first you shoot this guard on the left. You want to shoot this guy first because. If the sooner you hit this guy, the sooner the last guard's going to react and move to the corner to be in a nice spot to hit. Secondly, um, he's actually visible first because you're clearing the corner, so he's going to be easier to line up and aim at. So those are two reasons why you want to aim at this guy first. And as soon as your gun comes out, you're, I'm, I'm basically holding Z, and I try to do two shots, boom, boom. And then as soon as he's dead, I, I'm approaching the guard still. I don't wait. I'm... What I'm going to do is I'm going to get really close to both of these guys and I'm going to try to stand right around here, finish this guy off, and then rotate so I can hit the last guard. So you'll see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to be strafing upright and I'm switching aim to get the last guard here, as you can see. So I know he's dead because I heard two body hits basically. So now I'm yanking all the way left to my control stick, as you can see, and I've moved up very far. If you just waited for auto aim, you're going to be standing back here and waiting for the guard to come around the corner. But the way I do the first room, I don't wait for him to come around. I try to snipe him before he even gets to be visible normally. So right here, you can barely make him out, but he's that green smudge right there. And uh, you know, do two, three shots. Just make sure he's dead. That's all that matters. I get a headshot, so I know he's dead. Um, but I get a slow start, so. But that just shows like how to execute the first room. Let me play that back once in uh, normal speed here. Okay, one, two, two shots. Okay, approach this guard and then try to get the last guard. Okay, so there's some music cues here I want to show too. Um, if you like music, I'm just going to warn you it's not super consistent on control because um, first of all, if you get out of the first lift slow, your music might sound artificially fast, um, but it's still a general, like, good reference to go by. Um, but the faster you go out the lift, the slower your music will sound, but your pace will actually be pretty good. So boom, boom, boom. Okay. Donna. Okay, that last Donna. You want to hear that when you're turning this corner, if you're having a really insane start after killing all the guards. And then the next music cue is this, the high note, Donna. You want Nat's message to be up by then if you want to go for 356. But if you're going for 357, anywhere around there is probably totally fine. In fact, probably better than you need, but that'll make it easier to get the time. So I'll show you uh, another example of reverse room. I missed the warp again. One, two, three. And I knew I got this guy in the face. So this is going to be a little different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I see that the gun's here, so I'm going to make sure I get the gun. I have to hit A later than normal, and then I'm going to have to then react to what happens to the guards on the right. 
So I get the gun. So in this case, these guards are lined up very tightly. So it's going to be kind of weird. What's going to happen is I'm going to shoot at this guard, and then I'm going to strafe right and shoot this guard, um, basically. And my auto aim is still going to be fixed on this guard. So that's how this works. So as you can see, that two shots, and I tapped right, basically, and I got the uh, got this guard right away. And then this guard again. He's going to be coming around the corner because he saw you shoot the third guard or fourth guard. So you just take him out as fast as you can. And again, this music is fine. And the message is a little slow, so I pause that on that one. But generally, that's kind of what you want to go for. Perfectly fine for 357. Okay, so here's a backup that happens sometimes. Say you shoot this guard, but you hit his shoulder. Well, what I do is I try to kill the third guard, and then I try to kill this guy last. So. I know he's dead, and he can sack a little bit of time by strafing into the guard and killing him like that. Um, it doesn't waste much time, probably like point 0.1 or something, but you know it's good to at least go for the kill because you can still get insane deaths, and then your start will be fine anyways. And again, it doesn't. Uh, another, <laughs> I, I realize that another thing that could happen is you don't kill this guard. So what you can still do is you can try to pick them both off at the end here. So I try to get this guard and then I try to swing my gun like that. And uh, you know I still am on pace for 357 based on my music cues. And that basically sees me fine for 357 pace as you'll see. So the lift closes like right here and well a little bit before that like right there that is perfectly good for 357 in fact that's probably mid to low and um, now I'll use this opportunity to show you the references for pace here so basically the middle pillar here is 358 if that is past this pillar when the lift closes it's 358 pace probably with a decent like everything else past the middle here it's kind of a 357 but at the same time it could still be 358 it's pretty variable but the closer you are to this 356 barrier I would say the more likely it's going to be 357 and 356 I would say is only realistic once you know it's like right here at the corner or past it um, and then 355 is basically Nats turned for like a while and is already going towards the computer and basically is where that pink or magenta marker is. Um, that pace is pretty insane so I'll go ahead and show you the insane pace <laughs> because of that. Alright so here's a here's a insane pace run that I did and I'll show you why it's insane pace. Alright okay first of all I missed the warp surprisingly Wait, no, this isn't the run. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought I hit the run. Or the warp on that run. Okay. Okay, I hit the warp. So this warp was a little slower than the first one I showed you. But the main idea is I'm coming here, and this is lined up where the door is opening on my left side of my screen, and I don't see the right side. And then I'm, in, I'm through. I one-shot the guard, which is insane. So, And then I... Notice I didn't get the gun right away, so I had to like react and strafe right more to get the try to get the gun again. So I did get it, and I did manage to kill this guard somehow. And then these guards are lined up pretty well, so I go for the skill. I get the guard insane with the first shot and kill him, and then I notice that, so I basically move on to the last guard. And he's already like turned around the corner, and I get a good body shot on him, and he dies a really fast death. So I'm on pace, but. It's the deaths that really make the difference, and also, I hit the warp at the start, so that really makes this way more insane than it seems. So that's basically like, I've, I've had better paces than that even, but that's, that's about as good as you can really do, for the most part, without having like an even more cooked first room, which is possible. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk about um, what we do past the mines. So, there's a couple things you want to do. First of all, you want to always look at Natalia until she actually gets to the computer. Um, there's a post by Henrik that talks about 
all the different things that could happen. Uh, if you look away from Natalia, like for example, looking down here and trying to warp her and stuff doesn't really work. You can lose a lot of time actually by doing that. The only time saver that I you can do that I don't do is you can try to like move Natalia uh, by running alongside her and she can get closer to the corner because you're blocking her path kinda and she'll take a better line here. But the problem is if you get too far in front of her she'll spin and it's a bit inconsistent so I don't like doing that. So I just kinda just let her do her thing. So you're gonna wanna stare at Natalia until she's finished turning. At this point she, you can go ahead and look down and stuff like that. Now <clears throat> what we're gonna do now is She's going to hack this computer, and it's like a certain amount of frames, like 300 frames or something. I don't know exactly. And then when she's done, then the door will open. But the problem is she can play random animations during that time, and the door won't open until her animations have finished. So the old strat was to like shoot her in the arm and have her flinch, and then have her flinch end right when the door is hacked. But um, this is w way more consistent. So what you're going to do is you know, become unarmed, and then... I like to look down basically right when the message comes up and then when the message goes away then slap six times so one two three four five six and then look up and then uh, her message should come up and then I leave you can actually leave sooner than that but I like to wait until like I look up all the way kind of and then I go I think it gives you a better uh, mat animations when you return um, the other thing that could happen is she will do an animation anyways and screw you over. And that's just because RNG basically, like, um, sometimes the hacking sequence will complete faster than other times by, like, a very small amount, say a tenth or so. And there's also variation when you look up a little bit. So she sometimes will just not... Uh, hack the computer properly. If you're like on a really fast run and you're afraid of like totally losing it, maybe try to look up a tiny bit later than normal. Um, that she'll be more likely to not like screw you over and animate. She'll probably just hack the door. Okay, so now this part, I like to strafe right to the corner of the door and try to be lined up with the with the pillars as much as possible. And then I just switch weapons actually to warp, try to warp the door a little bit. I don't think that actually works that well, but I mean, I think it, it's, a, it's something. It, if you're gonna weapon switch, you might as well try to get through a door, so. I try to switch weapons here. Um, if you're playing on widescreen, you can kind of see this guard and see if he does any control. Like, if he charges you, you should probably turn and shoot at him. Look at uh, Asus 356, for an example, and how to deal with that. But the mind pickups is uh, pretty tricky, so I'll try to explain what to do here. So. Assuming you strafe all the way to the mines here, let me go back a little forward here. So, what you want to do is you want to turn the corner as sharply as possible and try to look up. Don't look too much down because then you'll miss the pickup. And then, uh, as soon as you're coming around the corner, I'm already starting to hit left strafe. So, right about now, I'm hitting left strafe. So, basically, it's like you're holding upright strafe just until you pretty much clear the corner like right now and then I'm pretty much holding up left at this point but my momentum forward carries me into the crates but it allows me to like leave really fast and next um, I recommend that you do this mind boost strat if you're going for 357 or better I think it doesn't waste time it's a bit technical and they control you but I think it's better than getting destroyed by crate guards so what you're gonna do is when you're coming out, uh, here you throw the mine basically as soon as you see the silver crate. And you should be turning while you throw. I think it affects the way the mine gets thrown. And then you detonate it pretty early. Like right when it's about to hit the crate, you detonate the mine. And you should get boosted such that you don't get stuck on left or right crate and you'll get right through without getting a back boost. Okay, and this mine boost is also pretty good, but you can also get trolled. Um, so I'll just show you how to do it right. Basically you throw it um, probably past this middle portion. It's a little dangerous to throw it too far to the right. If you throw it over here, the, the explosion won't kill the guard. So it's kind of risky, but you want to throw it right around here. So the mine, as you can see, landed. Uh, there's two parts. There's like this slanted part and then there's this flat part. I threw it on 
the edge of the slanted part, which is fine. But this part over here, the flat part, you don't really want to throw it there. It probably won't kill the guard. And then you detonate the mine basically as soon as you're rounding the corner to really get a boost. And plus you want to detonate a little early so this guard actually dies. The only issue is you could take a lot of damage. But if you execute both of those mine boosts well, you'll have plenty of health. Like you probably have as much health as you would have from three normal mine or like normal guard boosts. And then this mine, you can just throw it here or a little earlier. It doesn't really matter. Just try to not take too much damage. I took a lot of damage, but if you have more than four bars, you should be fine. Um, this door warp here is a little hard. Um, so, especially with all the mines and explosions going off, it's hard to time a little bit, but you want to basically hit B right now. Um, kind of, I feel like I'm opening the door through the wall here, the concrete, and it'll open the door, and I try to get close to the wall. I don't like to be far away from it, because I feel like that's going to make my odds worse. So if you open the doors right away as, like, as fast as possible, it'll increase your li likelihood of a good warp here. And then, you know, strafe change, and then basically, look. I like to look down a little bit, and I switch to detonator, and I have an angle such that, you know, it just pops me parallel th that way. So this is kind of a safe warp, but it was a very fast run to start with, so I didn't want to risk it. So this part's actually really important, and I feel like not a lot of players treat this portion here well. And you really want to like strafe like really well to the corner here. Let's see if I can get a non de interlaced frame. I think it's impossible. Okay, you really want to get to this corner here unless this guard charges you. Basically, try to get here to here to open the door. Um, don't go around him because that wastes like 0.5. Well, probably 0.3, but still don't go around him. Go in between this guard and go straight to the door like so. Like very sharp angle here and you can throw a mine here where you can save it. Uh, I like to throw it because um, it kills the guards nicely. And then this door press you kind of want to do uh, pretty early on. Like I kind of turn the camera so I can press B a little earlier than uh, normal so like I'm already like ready to hit B, hit B in between these two visual frames but yeah. And then you want to hang left of the door because you're probably going to get a boost through the door. So you got to be ready for that. Basically, I am doing a slow turn. So the slow turning is what helps you, me warp the door a little bit. Um, if you just keep your cameras the same, you probably get out the door slower. So the slight turning of the camera helps you get through the door a little bit quicker. This is like pretty advanced strategy, I guess. but when you do get a boost and you're doing this slow turning you that you'll have like a better boost actually and you'll get to the glass really well and then this is where this run dies actually it's the glass now the glass is extremely troll and that mine was pretty good um, the mine should be in the middle of the glass high is pretty good you don't want to have it too low a um, little bit to the left will definitely break the glass but it could kill you and certain parts on the right can blow up the glass really well too, but sometimes you'll get a two cycle explosion. And the other problem is if the mine's too far right, it might not blow up the mainframe, so that's something to keep in mind. So this failed, I don't know why exactly, the glass and break, I guess it was just too far to the right and maybe a bit low. The height seemed fine. And for the door open, you want to definitely like look towards the door a little bit early. That's just how I open big doors. Like, I kind of like try to angle myself so my distance is just a little bit more. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty marginal. Just make sure you don't choke the door open, I guess. And then um, the next strat is to stay and look down. And then I like to stay on the right side of this wall because I don't want to have any chance of loading Natalia too early. Like. You don't want her to open the door. You want her to warp it, so stay to the right and look down. And then basically go and touch the wall and then back up. And if you have a good Natalia, her message will come up like right away, like right now. So that's decent Natalia. Like she can probably have spoken uh, a frame or two faster, but it's kind of RNG how fast she'll actually see you. Because the game's in a like a script checking to see if Bond entered this area. So it's kind of random whether or not that check's going to happen as early as possible, but it's pretty good. 
So then you back up right away and don't look at Natalia right like don't look down this hallway too early until you've backed up all the way. And then now I look um, here. And what this does is this loads Natalia and she'll take a better path basically uh, to get to Bond and it saves a couple attempts, which is why this is faster than the old way of doing it. Okay, so I'll show you one thing that can troll like one troll thing that can happen during the mine segment. And maybe a reason why you'd want to do uh, just the old strategy, which is we use D5K and then a single mind boost. <clears throat> so you pick up the mines, like that was a really good mine pickup. So I'm turning really sharp, hit the edge of the crates, and strafe changing on the wall, switch to mines right away. I go for this boost. I get stuck here like really badly. So that's one reason why you don't want to do that. So you can actually get stuck really, really, really badly. And then I thought I had another example. Let's see. I think this one. I'll just play this for you. Oh, that wasn't it. Anyways. Uh, the other thing that can happen is a late boost, basically. And it will prevent you from getting around the guard uh, at the corner so that's something you have to keep in mind so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my 356 and we'll go over um, we'll go over some things that I did in my 356 so I'll just start it from this start actually and I'll just use this for the rest of the run so the start's gonna be pretty good I hit the warp um, this is an un, this is a non-standard first room pattern, but, uh, let's see, I'm trying to pause the damn thing. Alright, so I hit the warp, so I do two shots at this guy, he's dead. So in this case, like I said, I always try to line it up so, um, these guards are, like, aligned, and the re main reason I learned that is because if you do hit the warp, and you don't do a fast kill, this guard will react to the first injury and he'll run out of the way, which is why I said that you want to kill the first guard with one shot, because if you take more than one, he runs away backwards and like to the left, and he, it's just super hard to kill him. So um, I learned to aim like this when I hit the warp. So I hit the third guard first, actually, and I kill him with one shot, which is like insane. And I know I killed him just from feel. So that gives me a good time to get this guard really quick. And my auto aim actually helps for once. And he's dead. He dies pretty quickly. Again, um, switch to D5K as soon as possible and try to kill these guards um, as they line up. So again, I feel like that's a good kill, but I do two shots anyways. And then I strafe right and hit this guard. Try to hit him twice, but I've killed him already. So I my auto aim kind of like stopped grabbing on. Like you can actually turn a little early if your auto aim locks onto this guard. So that's just one thing to learn, I guess. And then hit this guy as he's coming around the corner. Hit his gun actually, but I hit the warp at the start, so that kind of saved that that missed hit. And I always hit R aimer there for some reason for like when you get the best deaths. But whatever, I didn't even have the best deaths on this run, I think. But Natalia was already turning when the door was closing, which is like definitely 356 pace. So luckily this room or this run has a decent crates area, even though I get stuck. Okay, look up, pretty standard. Get close to this wall. Try to take this sharp, but don't look too far down. Okay, this mine boost was pretty good. Okay, this is a very good picture, actually, of the second line boost. So, you know, you detonate that when it's around the crate. I kind of turned too sharply here. I turned to the right, and it got me stuck. I should have just kept going left. And then you want to throw the mine here, not here. If you throw the mine here, it won't kill the guard. So right here is where you want the mine. And then I detonated pretty early, but you can actually wait a little bit. But I feel like you get a better boost. And then, uh, definitely, I like to throw the miner in the corner here. 
and then detonate like when I hit the stairs. I take like no damage from that. And then here, you know, I try to open the door pretty early. So I hit the I hit B right about now. And then, you know, I look down and I switch to detonator and try to go straight through the door. And it works fine. And I'm already like on the line to the corner here, which is like fantastic. And then uh, switch to mines and put it in the corner here. And again, the slow turn through the door. So when I get a boost, I get right through the door. And then I throw the mine, try to throw it right here. So it is a bit to the left, but the glass breaks really fast. So that's like ideal. That whole section was really good, other than the crate stuck. The door here was probably a little slow, but it's fine. And then Talia was very fast. You look at her and she comes up the stairs. And then you want to keep looking at Talia until she's all the way down to the floor, ideally. You could actually, if you really want to, give yourself more time for the for the um, the mainframes. You can look away now and it doesn't cost too much, but you really should just wait until she hits the floor. So right about now I look away and I'm already backing up actually because I need to throw a mine here so I'm trying to get there as early as possible. Try to throw the mine middle to like just around here. If you throw the mine too far to the right this mainframe won't blow up and your run's dead. Okay so there's this explosion and there's a third explosion as you can hear and then when that third explosion goes you can go through the flames okay so for this throw it's a little tricky um, but it's not too hard once you figure out how to do it and I'll explain my method of doing this throw it's extremely consistent I rarely miss this throw um, what I do is I first get all the way to the corner here of the door and I open the door as early as I can so I open the door and I strafe up left into the corner. So kind of like position, like zero is my position in a way. And I back, just hold C down to back up. And then I look up pretty high. As you can see, my dot's probably like near the, the top of the doorway. And then basically I'm aiming for this wall here. Um, this is where you want the mine to go. It's going to warp through this wall and get to the mainframe. So I'm holding C up. My dot's like right here. And then I throw, I throw the mine right before I hit the wall. So right about now, I'm hitting Z. And then as soon as the mine comes out, go to the stairs. So turn over here and go to the stairs. The mine will warp. And I hit, I detonate when I'm about to go on the stairs. You can even get on the stairs and detonate. Like, like right here is fine too. But detonating it there is safer because if sometimes the mine will warp through the floor if you wait too long. So just detonate when you get on the stairs. And then this mine is trivial, just throw it there. And then this mine is really easy. You just kind of want to have your dot right around here. And then uh, just make sure it's above this line or at the line. Don't throw it too low or too far to the right, because then you'll fail. And then uh, you throw the mine and then look down all the way. So throw it down. The higher and more to the left it is, the better, but I'm always trying to throw it between those two concrete lines, like this line here and this line. Just have it in between here and kind of high left. It's perfect. Okay, I kind of wait until the mines stop skidding before detonating, because I if you detonate too early, then it might not reach the mainframe. Okay, so some knowledge here um, on what's, hap what's happening. You killed a guard over where that mainframe is, and you killed another guard actually in the drone room, probably. And so you're going to get like two or three guards just from that lure to your position. So if you wait on the stairs just a little bit, maybe kill like a couple guards, you shoot out the screen, it's going to always have those guards come from this side. And you can even wait and kill them now. And it will make your protect a little bit easier because then you don't have to worry about uh, dealing with them later. Uh, so now I, okay, so another thing about the strategy that I'm doing for the protect is after a little bit, after I kill those two guards on the right, I look to the left to see the guard that comes down for Natalia. And there's almost always one guard that comes down the left side. You want to get this guy ASAP. And then so, he should be easy to deal with. And then when you turn back, you're probably gonna have a black hat guard on the stairs here. Or a spawn guard or something. 
Another thing to look out for if you decide to stand on the on the railing like this is look for guards that come down here to break the glass. Like this is the the one thing that you should really be careful about. You can get any guard from from this position other than the glass guard. So you have to be careful like when the glass guard, if you get a glass spawn guard. And you can tell if you get a glass guard also by looking to the left. So <coughs> Okay, so for the rest of Protect, um, just hang back at the middle. Try to make sure you don't run too low on ammo. Destroy this completely if you plan on backing up Natalia. Because you don't want it to actually, like, a shot to miss and hit this. Because then it kind of distracts you. And that's when mistakes happen, is when you get distracted. And also destroy the table over there. You can destroy the other tables too. It has no bearing on space. Okay, so when you back up Natalia, try to shoot her in the forearm. Like right here, under the elbow is kind of where I'm aiming for. You can shoot her in the hand too, but this is like the best. So when her hand goes up like that, it's perfect. And then just, you know, just between every shot, just check to make sure you have no guards. Like the black hat guards, there's always going to be two black hat guards and then two guards that kill Natalia. So if you want to be really safe about backing up Nat, Make sure you kill the two guards after Natalia, like this guy, and I look for the other one, and then you shoot her in the arm. I I risked it here because I knew I was probably fine, and you can shoot her while her hands are up. It makes no difference, really. So there's another black hat guard. So I feel like there's no black hat guards. I don't see any spawn guards. So now I'm going to wait before this next shot because I knew it's been a while since I killed another Natalia. Uh, shooter basically an Italia guard so I get the glass guard okay one little tip here I knew the glass broke right but I checked I checked this anyways because there's been a, a few times where I get distracted by a glass guard but in reality there's another guard on the right coming down the staircase so it's good to like check this anyways because you know you have a second basically to get this guy so I just killed this guy really fast, and I knew I was okay, but I still checked that. <clears throat> okay, so one advanced tip is I have very low health on this run, and one thing you can do actually to like increase your survival odds is to go peek down this elevator hallway when it opens and kill this guard. And what it will do is it will lure two guards uh, over by the body armor early, so when basically when you're going to the BA uh, you'll probably be fine and the guards won't destroy you. This It's pretty useful on SA and double O, not so much on agent but it's a good tip nonetheless. So I backed her up all the way. You shoot her five times in the limb to back her up as much as you can and the protect basically is uh, is what it is. Again like I knew I was gonna have a glass guard but I I waited anyways. I, I said, okay, I know this guard's going to be here, so let's see where the other one's at. It's basically my thought process. If it's safe, then I go ahead and kill this guy. Check again. Boom, boom. All right, they're all, they're all done. Okay, so I'm going to speed up the protect here a bit. <clears throat> so... The rest of the protect is pretty straightforward. You just kind of wait around, kill guards, um, but you'll get a note, like a feeling for like when it's about to end. So right around now, I'm starting to worry about like it's completed. So one thing you could do is um, you can injure guards so that when they spawn they'll spawn after Natalia's already running to the end and they won't get in her way or anything like that. The way this run panned out, um, my timing of the guards was actually insane. I got three guards like right away, uh, which was like pretty much perfect. And I know I killed like two others early on, so I figured that I was fine for the ending here. So what you're going to want to do is make sure Natalia's not going to die. And then you're going to want to stand, I like to stand just like this, where I can see the staircase, and I'm pretty, I don't know, I can't explain my positioning exactly, but it's right around here. And you look down before her last message, it makes her actually complete faster, I feel, like more consistently. 
So right around there, she she the last message comes up, and then you look up, and then um, in this run, I had a guard on the stairs. You want to kill. Him. So basically, what's going to happen is Natalia is going to turn for the stairs. I start a timer and I leave, and she will fail if and only pretty much if and only if there's a guard up here, um, because the way the game works is that Natalia gets unloaded. As soon as you like go a certain distance away from her and not looking at her, and she'll just go through, she'll warp the door and she'll get to the end fine. But if there's another NPC like in the same path node or whatever, like this path node going up the stairs, then she'll get loaded. You can also just get bad RNG and get like a guard from the beginning to just just to load her and she'll get all fucked up and it won't complete. But um, basically, you want to make sure there are no guards walking up here. If you can do anything, try to kill them, which is what I did in this run. I tried to kill this guy while I was hitting my timer. So the way I timed the ending is as soon as she turns, I start a timer. Boom. It should be started already at this point. And I react and I try to book it as soon as possible. If you wait any longer than this, she'll, she won't warp the door and your run's dead. And because I lured the guards earlier from this area, there's only two back here. But I get unlucky and I get a spawn guard on the right, which is like stu stupidly troll because I already have like no no health. So just get to BA, like just no reason not to most of the time. And so now I have a timer going. Um, and the way I like to do the ending is I wait in the corner and I react to a certain time. So when my timer says 17.5, then I enter the lift because the minimum time that can complete is pretty much like 18 flat and so the time it takes to react for me from this corner like strafing into this corner to the lift is about 0.5 seconds so that's kinda what I use I recommend that timing so if you're like wanting to if you're staring at your timer and you see it to go 17.6 just like strafe change and then enter the lift like as fast as possible. It should be it should complete. So that's pretty much control agent. Um, I, there's not a whole lot more I can really talk about when it comes to 356. Um, basically, it's like 80% the starts, and then it's like 20% <laughs> after the start and not choking. Basically, just try to be very fast at the start, and I recommend this mind boost strat because you can see that there's blatant mistakes in here. Like I get stuck here, and I didn't have the best deaths and stuff, but <clears throat> the run was still very good. And that's all you really need is a very good run for 356. If you're going for 3 357, this is overkill. You could skip like the mind boosts or stuff like that. Or just not need as good RNG. Um, again, I'll, I'll show that image. Basically, for the starts, just try to get Natalia past this blue line, and then I would play out the run. If it's not even pat if it's not past the green line, don't play it out, is my recommendation. And, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just ask me, you know, hopefully that helps. Um, that's everything I know about Control Agent, so good luck.